Hello everyone, this is a broadcast of the West Leroy Bible Church on East Leroy, in East Leroy, Michigan on D-Drive South. Um, we do have a drive-in service on Sunday morning at, at 1030, and it is also broadcast on the FM radio dial, 108 megahertz on 87.9. Uh, so if you're if you're within four to seven miles, you'll be able to pick it up. Otherwise, when you're in a parking lot, you'll be able to hear us. We also encourage people to bring their lawn chairs. Uh, last few weeks, people have been in lawn chairs as well as in their cars, and that's worked out really well. So we invite you to come and join us. In the event that you're unable to, you'll still be able to hear the messages on YouTube as we are doing it today. The message today is a second in a series that I have just begun. I began the first one last Sunday, Relationship with God. Today is Relationship with God, Part 2. And our text is found in 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. Let me begin by just reading that, all right? Here we go. 1 John chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. This is the Word of God, reading out of the NIV translation. My dear children, I write this to you so that you will not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have, an, we have one who speaks to the Father, an advocate to the Father, in our defense, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but also for the sins of the whole world. Verse 3, we know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar, and a truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Dear friends, I am writing you a new command. I am, I am, I am not, writing you a new, uh, not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Verse 9. Anyone who claims to be in the light does, but hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light, and there is nothing in him to make him stumble. Verse 11. But whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks around in the darkness. He does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him. Well, this is the word of God. So, as we continue our series, last week, you remember in our new series, the Bible teaches about what it means to be in relationship with God. We learned last week that in the first chapter of of First John, our relationship with God is because of an open door policy God has provided for us, along with the joy of fellowship with Him, and because He forgives our sins. As John continues his teaching, he drives home some important truths of what a relationship with God requires. As it, as in human relationships, our relationship with God needs to be active and focused on clear communication, dialogue, and transfer of thoughts, which then affect our actions, responses, and reactions. There also needs to be accountability. If there is no personal accountability, our relationship with God will become superficial and become something only in word and not in deed. There are so many who say that they have relationship with God but it is only a statement of their belief in God because they are not reading His Word, spending time communing with Him in, in prayer or worshiping with other believers. We need to take a regular personal inventory of our lives so that we do not sidestep or overlook issues that hinder our relationship with Him. In human relationships, taking personal inventory of our lives is when we address unresolved issues that need to be dealt with and then resolved. This is what keeps things in proper perspective and helps us avoid the pitfalls of being dishonoring, disloyal, disrespectful, and disagreeable with one another. So, as we've read already, the, 
uh, the first 11 verses of chapter 2, there are three things uh, required for believers to maintain a right relationship with God. Here's the first thing. Number one, it requires we address sin. As long as we live in this life, we will continue to have to deal with our sin nature, which affects every aspect of our lives. It affects the way we think, the way we talk, the way we act, and the way we live. Sometimes our sin nature will cause us to act out in ways that harm us or and or others. Sometimes we act out willfully in wrong ways. Sometimes our actions or our reactions of anger and or frustration. In all cases, our wrongful actions and reactions will disrupt our lives and cause us um, harm and those uh, who are around us will be harmed too, which can lead to them hurt feelings, holding grudges, emotional pain, and, and a whole negative list which goes on and on. Notice here in the opening three verses, regarding th uh, sin, three things that the Apostle John mentions. Here's the first thing. A re our, our relationship with God helps us to not sin. Did you notice it in the very first verse? He says, notice, notice again what, what he says in verse 1. He says, Dear children, I write to you so that you will not sin. Wow, that's, that's an interesting statement. So, John understands that you and I, as believers, even though we know Jesus Christ is our Savior, we still have a sin nature, and we still sin. But that's always a willful choice. It's something we do without even trying. So, John says, I'm writing this to you so that you uh, will allow God to help you to not sin. Uh, it's always a choice. There's a second thing that we find, and that is this. Our relationship with God provides an advocate, one who stands in our stead. Aren't you glad what, what John says? He says, but if you sin, and it's not if for some reason, in for some freak a moment you might sin, he's really saying, when you sin, know this, that Jesus Christ is, is our advocate. Years ago, one of my favorite uh, things that I watched on TV was Perry Mason. That kind of dates me, doesn't it? Perry Mason was an attorney, and he would represent different people. Well, Jesus Christ is kind of like our Perry Mason. He represents us before God, and every time we sin, of course, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, accuses us of sin and says, okay, that person, that Gerard, he doesn't deserve heaven. And Jesus then steps in as our Perry Mason, as our advocate, and says, no, no, he's mine. I paid for his sin by my death on the Calvary's cross. There's a third thing that we find, and that is this. Our relationship with God is based on Christ's atoning sacrifice for sin. That's why John made that statement. Christ's uh, work on the cross was an atoning sacrifice. Uh, he took the place of bulls and goats, and his blood shed on the cross paid for our sin. So that's why it's kind of important that having a relationship with God means that we address our sin. And that's why, as we mentioned last week, we have 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. The principle is clear. Our relationship with God requires we address our sin nature in order to have the righteousness of Christ live through us. That's how it's supposed to work. Well, that's the first of three videos. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.